morning. Crossing the river this morning on the way to uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And basically where we're staying is in a river shack. I mean, it's anybody that's got river or river bottoms around them, they know what a river cabin is. It's essentially where we're staying. Uh, we just got two of them, but it was a blast last year. It's fun to, I've said in many, many videos how much I like watching the barges go by when I'm hauling grain and stuff. Well, right here, we're sitting right on the river and we get to watch them go by all week. So that's pretty cool, but uh, looking forward to it. I don't even know if anybody's here yet. So I may be breaking into the place to drop my stuff off. I'm not sure. So these two are home for the week, right on the river. Nobody's here yet, and I can't get a hold of anybody, so I'm locked out and unsuccessfully breaking in, which I'm not going to uh, get too carried away because I don't really feel like getting arrested first thing. But it'd be a lot cooler if it was warm. Should have brought my boat, got a dock and everything. Well, we made it and straight away. I'm taking that one home. Walking after hours, everybody's cleared out. This guy here, some of you may know. This is Ben. I would love to have one of these gnarly things because trees don't belong in cornfields or near them. They belong in the woods. So one of these would be awesome to have. So with the price of fertilizer continuing to stay more than what most of us would like it to be. Strip till something I've really been looking at. Um, there's two things though. Uh, one, I don't have hydraulic capacity. And two, they take a lot of horsepower. But they're not, ex they're not uh, cheap whatsoever, but neither is fertilizer. I think a guy could really cut down on his usage and uh, potentially have a really good ROI on strip till, you know, maybe do some cover crops between the strips and uh, kind of have the best of both worlds, cover crop and tillage. So something I've really been looking at, but it's a heck of an investment. With the bins going up, I'm also looking at a lot of these double runs, um, grain pumps, whatever you want to call them. Um, I would really like to put in some kind of drive over pit like this and have a double run or a grain pump going up to a wet bin. Sideways, hot dog style, not hamburger. I won't put my camera yeah, but uh, doing something like this, uh, this is real low profile because it's a chain instead of an auger, kind of like that. But uh, doing some kind of grain pump up to a wet bin, another one into a dryer, and then an air system to the bins, uh, something along those lines. Uh, talked to Sundega today, talked to them about some of their grain pumps, and it uh, sounds like. Uh, actually got a demo coming next week so looking forward to that i have been walking around getting several quotes on pull type spreaders this one's got my eye um, it's iso compatible variable rate um, made in quincy illinois talked to him a little bit about it um, it is within my price range to spread my own fertilizer which is something i'm really looking to do we already haul all the soybeans within like five miles of a ADM fertilizer terminal and they're typically a lot cheaper so we could just backhaul it back find a conveyor or something like that uh, self-contained I want one with a tube so we can unload grain out of a bin and load fertilizer um, but that would go behind the magnum uh, 
plug right into the existing ag leader that I have and we could variable rate all of our own fertilizer. So with the fertilizer spreader, I'm also looking for something exactly like this, just a little bit shorter. It's stainless so we can run plenty of fertilizer through it. Uh, it's got a, what I assume is, yeah, 37 horse. Uh, I think they said 25 gallon fuel tank so you could run it for quite a while without worrying about that. But my, one of my Tempty trailers has a side unload on it as well. Side unload tray, door, whatever you want to call it. So we could pull up right beside this, dump fertilizer into it. And uh, we could also unload grain bins with it. So uh, when we do look into spreading all our own fertilizer, we'll be looking for something like this to load it. And then it'll double to unload the new bins as well. I'm just saying, I wouldn't be opposed to running it. This is pretty slick. It's got furrow force. Um, I believe they said you can put, so that's just one big liquid tank, but you can also put more tanks. I, I want to say on the bar or on the wing, I don't remember. So you could run uh, two by two and in furrow. Um, but this thing is decked out. It is a really cool planter. Uh, one of the interesting things I thought was that you can actually take so much weight off of the main frame that a guy was talking about he got into a sticky situation where this planter started to sink in the mud and he put so much weight out on the wings of the planter that it actually picked these tires up out of the mud so he could get himself out of it that was interesting to me because that's a lot of weight to be transferring to the wings and if they still have really good lease programs like I think they used to, um, I am very, very much so interested in leasing a fin. Um, completely serious about that. Um, I would like to try one out. Um, but the strip till, the newer planters, anything I do, I'm going to need horsepower and hydraulic capacity. And uh, it has all that and then some and their warranties are really, really good. They cover everything, service, oil changes, absolutely everything. So you're turning a variable cost into a fixed cost. Downside to a lease is you don't own it at the end. It's money that's gone, but it's tax deductible. So I don't know. Then we got the Gleaner over here. A shed parked in a shed. They're really cool combines. Let's go check it out. Honestly, these Masseys, with the silver stripe they put on them, they gave them a little facelift, and they look pretty, they look pretty slick, honestly. It's always neat to be at the farm show and see equipment that you don't see at home, like big square balers. Like, I know they exist, but I don't ever see them around. I do know that the only thing that uh, ties a square bale together is witchcraft in the knotting system because I've never been able to comprehend or understand it. I mean, I suppose I'd trade my new sprayer for this one. Cab's a little nicer. Boom's a little bigger. I suppose. So there's only one thing that's not absolutely perfect with this tractor and it's the fact that there's not 5% window 10 on it to match. Other than that, this thing, well, that'd be a dream come true. This thing is awesome. And the only thing better looking than the outside of these tractors is the inside of the cabs. Um, they've cleaned everything up. The A post is cleaned up. Got the new 1200 uh, monitors in them. These handles are absolutely awesome. Um, all your functions are right there that you need. Um, really really awesome tractor i suppose i could do it this thing is very large and in charge but the coolest thing i think that is in this booth is not this combine i think it is this 4455 and and molly but this uh, 4455 i think has 94 original hours so to me old school cool is always going to be cooler than new school that's just me and if i was a betting man this thing will be running long 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 after anything else in this lot 
Um, the old ones just, they refuse to die. Love that about them. So the Kubota skid steers, one of the things I do like is that the door opens up instead of out. So like on my bobcat, I really like it, but I don't like the fact that if the bucket is up whatsoever, you can't open the door to get out. Um, one of the other things that I really like about this is the step. You can step right up into this where my bobcat, it's got a step, but these arms are set in here. They're way more narrow. Uh, when you open the door, it smacks those. And it's, it's just a little bit difficult to get in and out of, but uh, I've never really ran a bobcat but I, I really like how they're set up to get in and out of. They're just a lot more functional, it seems, seems like. I mean, with a skid steer, a lot of the jobs you do, you're in and out, in and out, in and out. So I really like that about it. The guy to really talk to about a Kubota skid steer is this guy though. What size do you have? 90. 90, okay. 90. So how do you like the door going Absolutely. up over your head? Because you can run it with the door up, correct? I, I run the door up the majority of the time. Yep. So, door's up majority of the time. It's like... It's one... That's what I was saying. I don't like about the Bobcat is, for one, these set in to, like, here. Yeah. So, if your bucket's up whatsoever, your door smacks it. Yeah. And it's a pain to get in and out of. No, I, I run the door open, like, the yeah. majority of the time. I think one of the last stops for the evening is the Kinsey booth. So they just came out with both of these. Uh, they're a completely different row unit from my understanding. Completely different bar. Um, 5700. This is a high speed 20 inch. Uh, I am really tossing around the idea of going to 20 inch. Uh, corn and soybeans. One planter for both. Um, uh, there's several reasons for that. Um, this one's a little beyond my price point. But it is an amazing planner. Uh, true high speed, I think. 12 mile an hour, I want to say. Uh, from when I talked to him earlier. Um, it's air downforce, air down pressure, or hydraulic downforce. Um, I think air closing. Um, or air down pressure on the closing wheels. But uh, 24 row, 20 inch. Which would be a 40 foot... So the equivalent to a 16 row 30. Uh, there's a 24 row here, 30 inch as well. And last but not least on our way out, you gotta check out the farm toy display. This thing is just pretty awesome. American dream. Yeah, that looks familiar right there. That scene, we've seen that on Clark Farms a time or two. Got the ag bags. Manure drag line. We've also seen that scene several times. But uh, pretty cool display. Lots and lots of detail, lots and lots of custom pieces. Pretty neat to look at. Yep. 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 It looks about as fun as what it is. It's close parking though. There goes the old TR. Couldn't tell what it was. I think it was 98 or 99. Anyhow, we are headed through Jasper right now, coming back from the farm show. Uh, I still have most of my voice, but it's on its way out. But it was an absolute great time. Uh, I got to meet several of you guys. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's, it's still odd to me, but it's cool. Uh, when you guys meet me in person and you, you know who I am, that's, that's odd to me because I'm just some farmer that uh, happens to put stuff on the internet. But I uh, always enjoy meeting you guys, uh, shaking hands, and shooting the breeze. So uh, anyhow, it was a good farm show. Uh, great group of people to stay with this week. Um, it was 
a good time. So, uh, several things in the works, several things I have gotten quotes on, and several things that I've got lots of sticker shock on. Everything cost about 30, 40% more than you would think that it would, it seems like. But some of the stuff, not so bad. Actually, a couple things that I was really interested in actually were cheaper than what I thought. So, uh, we'll see. There'll probably be some changes happening. But uh, anyhow, appreciate you guys watching. This is going to be it. But, uh, well, I'll catch you on the flip side.